Well, I told her when she asked if you were going to get mad if if she didn't have you on too, and I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. Hello, this is Rocio Baeza from the GDPR Stand-Up Podcast, and you are listening to Help Me With HIPAA. Thank you for that intro, and welcome to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT. Joining me is Donna Grindle of Carden. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, David. How are you? I'm a little, little slow. Yeah. Little so slow. somebody had a a birthday day yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So how it's was my it? COVID birthday, man. Yeah. So how do you how do you celebrate a birthday in quarantine? You know what? It was exhausting. <laughs> and and I I am very appreciative of you know the people that took the time to reach out and wish me a happy birthday and, you know, celebrating all those kind of things. You know, I got a lot of family and friends. I am very, very, very blessed in my life, but they will wear you out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I, I am noticing that people want to talk a lot more now <laughs> yeah, I know, than they right? did before and it's frankly driving yeah. me crazy because yeah. it's like i can't get people off the conference calls i'm like <laughs> <laughs> i understand you're cooped up at home for weeks i don't yeah. need the human interaction like you do <laughs> i know i don't either. and what you know but it's it's there's a part of it that is like once this conference calls over i have to go back to my family please don't make me do it <laughs> yeah i know that's probably a big part of it too yeah, but it's good because, you know, I had all these people that I was doing video calls with and, you know, and, and hey, I want to toast your uh, birthday. Well, great. And, you know, and then another and and a really good friend that uh, is a chef brought me a really, really good dinner. And, you know, it was spectacular, but I was exhausted. <laughs> I am. I am exhausted. I overslept this morning. So did she? Did she feed you like they do in prison? Did she like slide it under the door? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, she's. Uh, we've been team. Um, uh, what do you call it? Team uh, quarantine. But she's able to go to the grocery store and stuff like that, and runs around with custom made masks. Uh, she's got one that's Wonder Woman, <laughs> and uh, it has the Wonder Woman signal, and then her name is Cat, and so the other one has a big face of a cat on it. So it's pretty cool, and it's awesome to have a friend like that and someone that goes that far out of their way for you because she's not in all the high-risk categories, and, uh, and, and it's great. It gives us a whole lot of relief mm-hmm. so it's awesome so she brought over all this stuff it's like all the favorite things uh you know a tenderloin filet <sighs> wow yeah just what? brings it over sets everything up outside on the outside kitchen and cooks everything out there nice it was awesome right. yeah so well, i had a great birthday thank you thank you thank you to all yeah yeah and i completely missed it <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> I was like, is, what? Yeah, uh, which you know, my entire you week, don't usually do that. My dude, my week has been upside down. Like it, it's like everything has been crazy. And then on top of that, my internet has been spotty since we had these major storms come through on Sunday. So I will, you know, everything I do is online. Like I can't hardly yeah. do anything that is not online based. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm in the middle of doing an email and I hit send and it's like, nope, no internet. Or I'm working on a web page and I hit save. Like, nope, not going to save it. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, sometimes you have to do things over because, you know, when it comes back up, it still didn't save what you thought it saved. And And that makes you so happy. It's been a mess. And then... (laughs) You know, and like I said, I got people that want to call and talk 
on conference calls and of course the conference calls are scheduled and all that, but it's like, dude, I, I can't talk to you this long. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so no, this week's been crazy for me and honestly didn't even not, not only did I not realize yesterday was your birthday, but I don't even think I realized yesterday was Thursday. <laughs> Yeah, I did get some responses from you earlier in the week of, you know, I'm exhausted, I'm not sleeping, I'm working all these hours. Yeah. So this has not been a I, I have a, not I have not put in less than eighteen hours a day this week. Wow. Yeah. So, and on and on top of that, I've got this shoulder issue just happening all of a sudden and which means that when I'm sleeping at night and I roll over on it, I'm waking up. So it's just crazy. Know. It's crazy. Sucks. It's not for sissies. I know. It's not from lifting weights or anything. I think it's from having my arm propped up on the desk, yeah. typing on the keyboard too long. For t- I know <laughs> multiple people who are having that problem because, you know, I work at home all the time. So everything's set up ergonomically because I've had so many surgeries on my hand because of lack of ergonomics when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> But now I'm seeing all these people that, you know, they're not working at, at something designed for hours of work. Yeah. And see, my office, uh, I use a stand-up desk. So I I am used to standing up the entire day. Mm-hmm. And now I'm sitting down the entire day. And my body's well, like, no. You need to go. Come <laughs> on now. You country boy. You can fix that. Oh, I know. It, it's not that I can't do it. It's that. When I'm heads down in my work, I ain't got no time for that. And and I, I know that some people can can relate to this. I know you can, but when you hit that that zone, you know, oh, when yeah. when you're in the zone, yeah. um, when you get there, you're just like, oh, I got to take advantage of this. I cannot waste this opportunity. And so, you know, when you're there, you just want to just stay there, and you just want to hammer out as much as you can. Okay, so after we finish recording, you should fix the problem because you will not be in the zone. <laughs> I will not be in the zone. <laughs> right now, I'm in the podcast zone. Yeah. And so I'm trying to do an episode that is, you know, I had it planned before, you know, things went all COVID on us. <laughs> it's going to be a, a verb now. Yeah, I think so. I think, or you know, technically you need to have the 19 in there. And I've seen a lot of people trying it, you know, co-19, COVID-19. Oh, yeah. Rona. Yeah. Coronavirus. And, you know, there's like millions of coronaviruses. So uh, years from now, that's that's not going to work. And the bad thing is the next time somebody mentions coronavirus, (laughs) people freaking out. (laughs) I know, because, yeah, it's it's not COVID-19, not COVID-19, it's something else. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to go with COVID on it, Uh, COVID-19 or 19-co, I don't know, I'm still working on it. But this was an article that I had kind of queued up and I was working on when everything went nuts. Well, there was an article I was reading for this episode, there we go. And everything went nuts about evaluating MSPs mm-hmm. and the managed service providers or your IT company, depending on what part of that relates to you. Because I think that, that that's going to be a big thing when we bring things back up. It was a big thing that I was going to talk about in you know March. But, you know, anyway, yeah. that's what we're going to talk about today. And I was so excited when I realized that I had this one queued up uh, because I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. I started on it yesterday because I knew there's a lot you can do with this one. And uh, then I can kind of sit quietly. Oh, is that what it is? (laughs) Let me find a topic that I can make David work harder on. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I need you to work today, David. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest. If it worked for you doing the show notes, we would have no show notes because I have just not had time. (laughs) <laughs> when have you ever done the show notes? Today. <laughs> <laughs> Pasted them in. So. Uh, no, I, I yeah. mean on a consistent basis, honestly. It's like if yeah. I had to do the show notes consistently, I just yeah. it, we would be we would be free farming. <laughs> We'd be well, freestyling. You do, that, so. you do be, that some anyway and torture me. We'd be podcast but, freestyling. Oh, <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> uh do have a few shout outs though. All right. 
shout out to Jen Stone over at Security Metrics had me on her new podcast video thing so that we actually sit and talk. And and it's really nerve wracking for me. And and there's a reason you and I don't do that. But they do the video and the audio. And so it's the video goes out on YouTube and the audio goes to the podcast tools. And we go to YouTube. We have our YouTube channel, but mm-hmm. it just has a picture of us and our voices. Yeah. No, they actually. So I had to put on a shirt with a collar. What? I know, right? I don't yeah. do that normally. And I certainly haven't done anything other than a t shirt for a long time now. <laughs> but had a great time and good luck on their podcast. And it was great. And she's a listener of ours. And so that was awesome. Yeah. And, and Jen, Jen, just so you know, I am hurt, <laughs> deeply hurt by you, Jen. That's all I say. <laughs> well, I told her when she asked if you were going to get mad if if she didn't have you on too, and I said yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but you said yes with a smile. Yeah, I did. I said I I, I like that, <laughs> uh, and uh, so, but either way. I think it was uh, great fun, and I did get to mess with David a little bit, yeah. uh, you, even on that one. You cut me deep, Jen. You cut me deep. <laughs> she did acknowledge you right up front, though, so I didn't even get a chance to leave you out. <laughs> also, a shout-out to Pearl Kim at Untethered Labs, the Gateway folks. I owe her like four phone calls, and this is just part of me saying uh, gatekeeper, not gateway, gatekeeper, because, you know, I've been playing, I play with their tools all the time. I love it, and I've recently switched over to where you can just tap the thing, and it logs you in. Oh, Mm -hmm. you know, and they've got some really cool stuff, and she sent me this keyboard that's washable, (laughs) because, you know, I need those things. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to her. And then a sad note uh, for those of us in the HIPAA world, I learned this week about the passing of Steve Lazarus from the COVID-19 virus. And he was a big name in, you know, the HIPAA-dom, if you will. HIPAA-sphere. HIPAA-sphere. <laughs> and it is, it is going to be a large hit to the community as a whole. And... I definitely feel uh, that uh, we owe a lot to him and his efforts in promoting what is the right thing to do under HIPAA. So, mm-hmm. um, and our thoughts go out to his family and those close to him because I'm sure he was always funny. I always loved it if he was doing a session. It was like, oh yeah, I've got to listen to that one. It's gonna be good. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right. So that that is a sad note, but do you have any other shout outs, David? Um, I don't think so. No, at least not right now. He'll think of it later. Yeah, I don't think so. But yeah, I, I don't know. I sent <laughs> I sent Donna an email yesterday and I was like, Did you see this email from a listener? And she's like, Yeah, I responded and copied you on it. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I don't, whatever. I don't even know what week I'm in anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's a good one, David. That's a good one. Yeah. And is. as it stands right now, we're still on for the HIPAA boot camp. Yep. San Pedro. Well, we've got the the spring one will be in August. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm jumping to California already. I'm on a vacation. Right? I am so ready for a vacation. <laughs> August 18th, 19th, 20th in uh, the Atlanta area. In Tucker, Georgia. Well, y'all come on down now, you hear, and visit us. And mm-hmm. uh, we will have uh, some of my favorite uh, beverages, like a country club iced tea <laughs> uh, that I have frequently. Um, <laughs> if you want that recipe, let me know. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the uh, fall session then, September 15th, 16th, 17th in San Pedro. California, yeah, and we hope all of it sticks and and works. But uh, now, now let's clarify know. something here. 
because I had somebody email me and they were like, I got the address. I looked it up on Google Maps and I can't find a conference center. (laughs) (laughs) So do you want to clarify? (laughs) Look, we don't do things the way other people do things. It's established. It's clear. (laughs) We don't. And we... (laughs) We have a friend that runs an Airbnb in a two-story guest house, and the first story uh, they use for their business to do meetings. They run a home business, and they do meetings, and, they, and you know, it's designed for a handful of people, which is what we like to do. You know, mm-hmm. we like to keep it small on purpose, and... They gave us a deal, so we, we've we kind of leased out the whole guest house, and, and we have an apartment upstairs to stay in and downstairs to have our meeting in, and it's awesome. So, no, it's not a conference center that will ever show up on a map. <laughs> it's our own version of a solution to a well-known problem so we can see if it works for us to invest in coming out to the West Coast. It was a perfect solution for everyone. And all right. uh, hopefully all of that will still work out because, you know, things are trying for all of us right now. So Yeah, we're trying a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> we, we hope to be able to come through with all of those. And it is absolutely one of my favorite things to do. Again, exhausting, but... Really love that interaction and the energy and the discussions that we have in our boot camp. So go to the hippa boot camp. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> it just never gets old, does it? <laughs> uh, no, just waiting to see how long your pause is. That's really why I do it. <laughs> yeah. It's like when, you know, it's like when you're standing there not expecting it and somebody throws a ball at you. <laughs> <laughs> Hit you in the face. That's what I'm going for, David. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the kickball right to the face. Yeah. Oh, so that's it. But uh anyway, I would I would like to I guess bring up, you know, those who listen and uh you've made comments to uh to Donna and and sometimes myself about what the podcast means to you. Uh thank you because it it definitely helps us to keep things in perspective and understand that it's not just her and I goofing off and hoping people listen. <laughs> well, it is, but it, <laughs> but people are listening, and it does matter. And it's good for us to hear that it does matter from folks. So mm-hmm. please don't hesitate to share that with us. It does make a difference to us and make us realize the importance of continuing to write show notes and mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, publish these things. So thank you for helping us realize how much we matter. Yep. And, um, and that is a good segue into also thanking those who donate to the podcast. And so if you're a supporter and you donate and you can do that at help me with hippa.com. And we have a few people that are doing that on a monthly basis. And uh, thank you. That helps. Helps offset the cost of the show. Yes, very much so. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. All righty. So before we get into today's topic, let's hear a little from our sponsors. Are you frustrated with your current IT provider? Are you sure you're getting the security and protection you need? Are you putting your patients and your practice at risk? If you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, give Security First IT a call to learn more about how they can protect your patients, your practice, and your bottom line. Find them online at securityfirstit.com or call 980-288-5100. The number of medical practices that think they're HIPAA compliant is pretty staggering. Effective privacy and security are an ongoing process, not a checklist. And that's why at Cardin, they don't just assess your situation and leave you with a report, but they work with you all along the way. Call Cardin today at 678-292-5001 or visit them on the web at cardinhq.com. Aren't your patients worth it? All right, so let's get to 
topics of the day, which is evaluating MSPs. Yes, so, please, let's do that. And for those of you that are in Minnesota, it is not the Minnesota State Police. Where to? <laughs> <laughs> because it, I have a an alert, like a Google alert for MSPs, uh-huh. and I'm constantly getting alerts from about the Minnesota State Patrol or something like that. No, you can you can exclude that. And I'm like, no, not that MSP. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so <laughs> there was a meeting of the National Association of Secretaries of State that uh, occurred in January, and the Secretary of State from Louisiana, who's Name is Kyle R. Well, it's so Onion R. Don A R D O I N. So you know it's got the French flair to it. But he's Secretary of State. That's Louisiana, right? Louisiana. Okay. Nolens. And uh, anyways, he did a presentation talking about the fact that they had several state and and local agencies were hit with a, well, they were ransomed. They were ransomware. <laughs> in July, it happened. And then again, in November, oh, it wow. happened to some different ones, not the same one. So it hit school systems and counties and all of this kind of stuff. And it was around the same time, like 22 counties got hit in Texas all at the same time. Mm-hmm. And the MSPs were how they got in. Yes. And so I first saw the article because, you know, I monitor for MSPs. and SS- So anyway, the MSSP alert sent out that they saw this article uh, originally in State Scoop. So we got a couple of different variations or opinions. We got one telling us what happened and then the MSP evaluation of it. Mm-hmm. But there were some very specific comments in there. And when the article opens with a single line that says, many MSPs, many service providers, are dropping the ball on cybersecurity, leaving elections open to the threat of cyber attacks. Louisiana Secretary of State Kyle Ordon. Uh, on your own or door. I got nothing. <laughs> Warned peer government leaders on January 31st. And I went, oh, oh. And the, you know, that you go to the state scoop article and you see this whole room full of leaders from around the country. All the states are at this meeting and he's saying, hey, y'all, this MSP thing, y'all need to be paying attention to. And he had a statement, firewalls and system patches and antivirus. What used to be sufficient for MSPs, they are no longer. As attacks grow more sophisticated, many MSPs have not been upfront with their clients about the need to invest more in security. This leads to serious problems for their clients and the MSPs themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But his his whole talk was about making sure that they understand this and that he is now using an MSSP because they need to worry more about security. Remember, these are elections, right? Right. We ca- we kind of want those secure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I you know I do. I, yeah. I I'm a big fan of democracy actually being secure. Yeah. No more hanging and, chads. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget that night. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's like, what? In the middle of the night, you're like, what is going on? Okay, so, uh, but he did point out that, you know, they had made the switch to the MSSP because it's stepping up their security. But he also pointed out that it is more expensive mm-hmm. and that, He said specifically election officials need to fight for more IT security funding. And then his closing statement that the article covered sounded really familiar (laughs) to those of us who listen. It's verbatim, at least according to the article, they quoted it. 
It's not about saving money. It's about protecting systems. Ooh, that's close. It's close. <laughs> yeah. It's got the same kind of approach. Mm-hmm. And yes, this was about elections, but it also applies in banking and fintech and healthcare. You know, all the businesses out there, regardless of industry or size, they need to hear this information. And especially the MSPs need to hear this information. Yeah. And this this also is going to be a good topic because some companies are now evaluating not just the MSP, but they're also evaluating the security. Like, how can we cut the bill? We don't want to get rid of the IT person or the MSP, yeah. but how do we cut the bill? Yeah. And my fear is they're going to cut security because they don't know what that is. That's you can you can feel support because you're paying for it. You can't necessarily feel security. Well, that's like the calls you get. We we don't think we need you anymore because we never call. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, mm -hmm. it, th this is one of those times where you're paying for nothing to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? Not not for your provider to not do nothing, but you don't want to see security problems. And so you're paying for those things to not happen. Exactly. And, I, you know, often people don't get it that they see – their IT is somebody that handles the problems. They don't see IT as somebody that prevents the problems in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And it's unfortunate, but that is part of what we need to do is change that perspective so that people understand it. But on the flip side of that, the MSPs need to step up. Oh, yeah. And one of the things, and, and we're just going to say it's an unnamed group discussion. We're not going to go into the details, but here was a quote from some folks that do pen testers that uh, we work with, you know, the whole, there's always a, <laughs> for some, it's unfortunate. There's always a, a tech discussion going on somewhere in some forum, right, David? Oh yeah, always. And sometimes David just <laughs> reaches <laughs> his, the end of his rope <laughs> And he just went off in some of them. But this particular one it was interesting because it was a quote. Here we go. We just finished a pen test of an MSP that supports banks. We were able to fish the VP of compliance, get his 2FA code. Then we found the FTP credentials for their payment processing systems of all their clients in an Excel spreadsheet in SharePoint with directions for formulating all the usernames. <laughs> mm. And, you know, at that point, they they were going to have control over everything. Oh, yeah. So here is the point that we make about 2FA is not the be-all, end-all. And phishing is something that everybody needs to understand. And security training is for all Workforce members. But I'm the VP think, of compliance. I don't have to take the training. Yeah, I know. I know it all. <laughs> and, and you know, but it's it it's coming out of the MSP. I know. You know, it's... Yeah, uh. this, yeah. <laughs> so that brings me to the point of the episode where David is now going to drop some serious knowledge on everybody <laughs> because, and, and if you haven't, I don't know if they're leaving the... Uh, SMB Cyber Summit up in definitely or whatever. But David did a session. We were both honored to be part of the CyberX SMB Cyber Summit. And this is part of what he discussed in there. So, yeah, I think you can get, I think you get it for free during the launch. And then they, after that, you, you have to pay. I think it's $97 to get access to it. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember. So, um, but we can we can link that in the show notes. Of course, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Donna is spelled W E. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, have at it there, my friend. Well, you're on. Well, as as we evaluate, you know, MSPs, we first of all have to Think about, you know, what is it that if I'm a customer, what is it that I actually need 
from an MSP. And I think that's kind of where <laughs> the communications fall apart. <laughs> it's because yeah. you call somebody and you're like, hey, come do this work for me. And you're, <laughs> But I don't really know what I need. I need you to tell me what I need. Yeah. Okay. That That's, I understand it. And I hear that <laughs> a lot. But, you know, if I call an exterminator out of my house and he goes, well, what do you need? Well, you tell me what I need. <laughs> He's going to be like, I guess you need an exterminator. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's, I mean, the, yeah. the only way he can really tell you is he's got to do a ton of work to assess and examine. And, you know, mm-hmm. and, and although there's assessments that IT can do, these assessments are typically one-time snapshots of what's going on. It's not like they're able to look at what's happening for like a 90-day period to get a really great idea of what's happening. So yeah, it's a point in time. Yeah. So if the exterminator walks around my house and he's like, I don't see any bugs. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, it's like, I swear to you, they're there. They just don't come out. <laughs> yeah. There was a roach with a sidearm standing in the hallway last night telling me I couldn't go. I know. So, you know, it's kind of the same thing. You need to, you need to have some idea. Like, what do you want and what do you need? At least from a high level. You know, do you, do you want support? Do you want just security? You know, I guess another thing to bring up is that since the M- EMSSP is kind of really new, there's yep. there's some variations there. Like there are companies like us that, you know, we say we're an MSSP because we're security focused, but we also provide IT support. Well, some MSSPs don't provide IT support. They only provide security. Yes. And so, you know, you can't just call somebody and go, you're an MSSP. Let's do business because they may not yeah. there again. What do you need? And if you need support and all that, then you need to ask those questions. Well, yeah, because they you'll call them up and they'll like, no, you have to call IT for that. Well, who are you? We're security. <laughs> exactly. So you have to kind of know, you know, what what you want there. But then the other side of it, and this is the the always challenging question, which is what is your IT budget? <laughs> Most people say, I don't have one. Um, but, and, and sometimes it's one of those questions where, especially if you're evaluating a new uh, vendor, it's like, you don't want to give them that information. You feel like, well, you were probably going to tell me, you know, this number, but because I told you I had a bigger budget, now you're going to increase that number. And so, right. And that can happen. I, I get it, Uh but you do have to have some kind of idea. Are you in the same price range? as the people you're trying to hire. If you're thinking, well, I can't spend any more than $500 a month, and this company's coming in going, our minimum's $5,000 a month, well, then you don't need to even have a conversation at that point. Don't waste each other's time. Right. So at least have an idea that you're both in the same ballpark. And you know, we've gotten to the point where we we bring that up before we even do a proposal because we spend so much time doing a proposal, and then to come up and the person's like, Oh, I thought this was going to be half that. I'm like, (laughs) Uh, then we're not, we're too far apart to even have a conversation at this point. Yes. So I agree. So we just can't do anything. All right. So here's something that I'm going to give you some numbers. And I found this extremely difficult to find. (laughs) (laughs) But one question I've honestly been trying to find some answers to for, about two years now is what should a company be spending on IT? <laughs> that yes. is proven to be very, very difficult. But I finally ran into a very recent uh, survey where uh, it was an IT vendor that did a survey of other companies and they were asking questions like, what does your cybersecurity look like? How many breaches have you had? How many security incidents have you had? They were asking these types of questions. And then one of the other questions was, what is what percentage uh, of your budget is is uh, given to IT? And then what percentage of that is given to security? And then, and then they cross-referenced all this to say, the people that are having the least amount of security problems are also spending this amount of money. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's helpful. And so what they come up with is basically that on average your total IT budget should be about 14% of your gross top line 
and that of that 14%, about 11% of that should be dedicated strictly to security. Wow. So good numbers that's, to that's go by. That's a, yeah. But 3% is what you need for help desk. <laughs> yeah. You know, and all that other stuff. And uh, we should probably provide a link to that if we have it. I will find it. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, that's to throw numbers out there. You have to figure out how that looks in your organization. But the bottom line of that really is you, sh- you're, you shouldn't be saying, I don't have an IT budget. <laughs> And nor should you probably be spending 30 to 40% on IT either. Uh, both of those extremes are indicating to me that something's wrong. Right. Uh, so you should have something and it should be substantial. It can't be nothing or it can't be just you know 2% or even 5%. I mean, it's got to be enough. You run your companies off of IT. And I don't think a lot of people really realize how integrated the business is around IT. I think they're, they may have some idea of it now <laughs> through this. Yeah, I think this this will this will and as you know, and I've been trying to say to a lot of people, IT, as you have mentioned repeatedly, needs to be thanked because they have taken our entire economy virtual. Mm-hmm. In with no planning, no time to prepare. It just happened overnight, and it's remarkable what they've done, but it will require people to reevaluate when we reboot. What what are we doing with IT? We should kind of not put them in the basement anymore. Yeah. That is, I agree. True. So, you know, think about the money part of it. It's like the quote said, it's not about saving money. It's about protecting systems. And, um, mm-hmm. it, but so you need to have some idea. So I'm telling you that, if you take whatever your top line is and you go, okay, if I take 14% or 10% or whatever, if I take that number, that's kind of where I should expect that number to be. And, uh, and I think that's going to help you understand when the guy walks in and gives you a quote and you go, oh my gosh, that's, <laughs> that's more than I expected. Mm-hmm. It, well, if you're around 14% of your top line, then it shouldn't be uh, beyond expectation. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, if you have something in mind, and if it is way beyond that, then you know they're not for you. Yeah, well, then you then you can question it. But I, I literally had somebody one time in a in a a, a meeting where we were doing a proposal. Uh, the question was, wh- how much do you expect to spend? The dude literally told me a dollar, mm-hmm. and I I closed my stuff up and I stood up and I said, we're done. And uh, of course, he was like, "Oh, I was just joking." I was just, I'm like, "Look, look, man, I don't have time for that." <laughs> I mean, this is the security of your business here. You know, let's let's have a serious conversation about what this looks like. We can joke around later. <laughs> yeah, but you'd say that to somebody else and go, hur, hur, hur. "Well, it was just the wrong thing at the wrong time." <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, yes. all right. So the other things. To think about is what are your expectations, and this gets into communication. You know, we we always talk about how the expectations between the MSP uh, and the expectations of the client are so far apart because they're not communicating well. So, understand what that looks like. We talked in the next one here. We've talked about a lot, which is what risks does this vendor bring to your organization. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that uh, the Secretaries of State found out because the uh, RMM product that the MSPs used is how they got hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people think, oh, I'm hiring hiring an IT company. They're going to come in and they're going to secure all of my risks. Yeah, they they might, but they're also bringing some some of their own, (laughs) right? (laughs) Uh, I mean, I know this when I go into a a business and we start doing business with them that we are bringing in risks that we have to make sure that we're covering. Mm -hmm. If you allow somebody in or you allow them to install things, risk. Exactly. And you can't do your job without those things. So there you go. So be aware of that. All right. Then do you have some way to do a vendor security assessment? So, you know, we, (laughs) we have whole episodes on vetting your vendor. (laughs) 
Uh, so do you have a way that you're vetting this vendor out and you're trying to understand that? And and we've go back and just look for that. That whole entire episode is about this one thing and mm-hmm. understanding what you should be asking and what they should be saying. And then do you understand what your industry requirements are around privacy and security? <laughs> uh, not, yeah, not does the MSP understand? We'll get to that. But do yeah. you understand? Because you've had people say, well, we don't need all that. Yeah. I've also had people say, we understand HIPAA inside and out. And they don't understand how to spell it, much less. <laughs> or who, who is OCR? <laughs> yeah. And, and then because if you don't understand what your requirements are, then you're not going to know if the MSP is telling you something inaccurate or not. Right. So, so to just say, well, we outsource that is not enough. You have to understand what you need them to be doing. Yes. All right. So those are the things that uh, that you, as the customer, should have clarity on. All right. So let's go quickly through what the MSP should have clarity on. So as you're talking to them, one of the things uh, that you're going to hear is, uh, how they're different from everybody else. So, you know, understand what those differentiators are. And if, and if they say we're different because we're better, then you probably should find somebody else. <laughs> 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 because you can't measure that. And and they don't know who they're dealing with, you know, who the competitors are. How do they know that they're better than everybody else? That's, you know, that's fluff in my opinion. But the differentiator should be things like, we focus on security or we are specifically in the healthcare space or we specifically do work with legal. Those would be differentiators that you can kind of hang your hat on, but you want to find somebody who's, who is specializing in something and that something should be one of the things you're looking for, (laughs) which goes into, you know, what, what services do they provide? They should be clear on that. Uh, what type of security are they providing? What solutions do they provide? So all those types of things, they should be able to speak specifically to what they are doing for you or what they want to do for you. And then what expectations do they have for you? Because they're always there. They don't want to talk about them all the time, but yeah. they do expect you as a client to do things other than just pay your bill. <laughs> <laughs> so understand what those things are, because this is where, Things break down when it's like, I thought you were doing this. And they're like, no. <laughs> yeah. How many not. times have we talked about vendors say, oh, well, I, I expect the client to take care of this medical device security, but then they never discuss it with IT. And even if they did, IT wouldn't be allowed to touch it. I mean, there's a clear one right there. Yeah. Well, here's, a no- here's one we tell our clients. We expect you to tell us when you're bringing new devices into your environment. And, and it's not that we can't you know, have an alert happen, but we want them to be proactive in telling us just in case. We also expect them to tell us when they're bringing in new employees. We expect them to tell us before they terminate somebody so that we can plan to remove them before they're terminated or as they're being terminated, not two weeks later. Mm -hmm. And so ASAP. Right. And so that's just, you know, we have a list of things that we say, look, these are things we expect from you. And if, if you dropped a ball, on your on your side, then we're gonna you know we're gonna hold you just as accountable as you're gonna hold us. So what are those expectations? All right. So we talked about the the risk that they bring into the organization. So they need to understand what risk they're bringing in. What we just dis- discussed before was uh, you understanding what risk they bring in, but they should be understanding the risk. And if you ask the question, well, what risk are you bringing into my organization? They're going. Well, we don't bring any. We're coming here to fix your risk. <laughs> no, they do bring risks. Yeah. You sh- and they should be able to speak to that. They should be able to say, yes, these are the risks we're bringing, and these are the things we're doing to mitigate those risks. That should be a conversation they should all be having, especially after what happened last summer. <laughs> especially. And, and I, honestly, I don't know that that's a question a lot of MSPs could answer. And- Good point, David. <laughs> Which is sad. So some other, a couple other things uh, you might want to ask is how do they stay educated? You know, are they listening to the Help Me With Hippo podcast would be probably an answer you're looking for. Um, <laughs> how do they ensure the security of your business? So, yes. you know, are they doing 
the set it and forget it model, which unfortunately happens a lot <laughs> and it is not good, but you know, are they doing things like, uh, you know, reviewing the logs? Are they going to industry conferences and, you know, how are they making sure that your business is staying secure? Are they evaluating things on a consistent basis? All those types of things. All right. So Indeed. here's some things you should look for. We'll run down this list quickly. So how long have they been in business or how long they've been in your space? So are you dealing with somebody who's been there for 20 years or, you know, 20 hours? <laughs> and don't take it that, oh, well, I worked for this. Uh, I worked at the hospital in IT for 15 years and now I'm going out on my own. That It doesn't count. Those are two different kinds of businesses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, very, different. very um, different. So, yeah, I mean, these are not, if they answer yes in one question, then they're good. This is kind of a totality thing here. Mm -hmm. So another thing to look for is, do they understand the bigger picture? Because security is not about compliance, and compliance is not about security. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've got to look at, you are a, a just a tiny piece of the big moving machine that is your business. Yeah. And this also happens a lot of times when IT walks in and says, we're going to do a security risk analysis for you. Well, uh, typically what they're calling a security risk analysis and what you're calling a security risk analysis don't cover the same things. <laughs> I know that's the case for me. <laughs> so they need to understand the bigger picture of what you need, not just what some vendor told them they could do with some scanning tool. Uh, okay, so are they following proven cybersecurity frameworks? That's something to look for. You don't want it to be, this is Billy Bob's idea of good security. Yeah, yeah. you should do things <laughs> like, you know, we follow the best practices, standards of the NIST cybersecurity framework. Mm -hmm. Right there. That, that would be enough. Enough for me because they even knew that. <laughs> yeah, well, it um, also gives but, you something to fall back on to say, okay, if you're following this, then I can pull this out and go show me what you're doing in these areas. Right. And I want to know that you're using it internally in your company as well as in mine. Oh, yeah. That's that is a big point that I think the MSP industry started figuring out is that they oftentimes aren't eating their own dog food. <laughs> exactly. It's driving us crazy. It's, you know, we expect our clients to do HIPAA. We expect them to have security. We expect, and then when you go, well, what are you, what are you doing internally? Well, we, we don't really have the same level of security and we haven't done anything around HIPAA. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, why are you getting, you know, MSPs getting mad because the clients don't, you know, they're not wanting to play ball when it comes to HIPAA. And MSPs aren't doing any better. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, the next thing to look out for proper insurance. Uh, you probably want to make sure that they have some way to pay for things when it goes south. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do they have a formal and comprehensive agreement? Uh, or is it one of these template things? You know, that's not just for a, a, an MSP agreement, but that's also for things like the BAA that you may have to have between you. Yep. So look at those things. I don't care how big or small the company is. I've seen <laughs> and ranted about <laughs> yeah. their failures and shortcomings. Mm -hmm. Do they have an instant response and business continuity plan? Right now, you probably know that. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, did they do it on the fly? <laughs> yeah. Know? And that that's a big thing because if you need them to participate in yours, they should have one that expects them to participate in yours. Yeah. Yes. It's, you know, we, we talk in every single HIPAA boot camp, we talk about how if there is a regional disaster, your IT person is going to be inundated. Well, everybody's like, well, maybe it happened, maybe it won't. We we had it happen at a global scale. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're not going to have so many trouble having people say, yeah, that could happen anymore. Don't tell me it can't. Yeah. So every IT vendor out there has been inundated with, do you have laptops that, because I need people working from home, do you have a way to connect these people back to the office? Do you have a way for us to print remotely? Do you have this? Do you have that? I mean, completely inundated with all this stuff. And it needs to happen now. 
<laughs> so, all right. So what about a, a vendor assessment? Do you have, um, you know, something like that they can do? For example, Cardin has a business associate due diligence survey or yeah. questionnaire. So that would be something. Also, do they provide a proof of concept? And this is something that's <laughs> kind of new, but not new. And uh, what we do with clients is we come in and we say, look, we're not even going to talk to you about a contract until we've been in place with you for 100 days. And at that point, we'll decide if we want to do business together anymore. And that gives us, as the MSP, MSSP, gives us the ability to say, all right, within 90 days or so, we understand the environment, we understand the client, we understand how well we're able to work with them, they can work with us, and then we can decide, do we want to go into a, a a one-year, three-year agreement, whatever, at that point. It gives us the ability to have proof that we're good for that client and they're good for us. And it does the exact same thing for the client. So they they don't have to jump into a three-year contract and then realize six months in, they've screwed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which is a big problem. I mean, we've, yeah. picked, we've picked up a, a law firm uh, over, the, over the holiday Christmas break um, and the law firm had three different times that they signed three year contracts that went south. Oh. So for nine years, they had terrible IT. And of course, when they come to us, they're like, we ain't signing no contract. <laughs> and you're like, I don't want you to. I was like, yeah, cool. Cause that's not how we do business. And they're like, what? I mean, everybody else they talked to said, you have to sign a three year contract right out of the gate. I mean, that would be like walking up to some girl and be like, hey, will you marry me? I'm like, what? <laughs> Let's don't even talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway, have that. And then lastly on this list of uh, things to look for is, is, does the vendor truly understand your privacy and security requirements in detail? Yeah, because we run into this all the time when we say we need to have reports to show you're doing you're supposed to do that we have antivirus in place and that our workstations are accounted for and that uh, patches are in place these kinds of things we need to have reports of that and you wouldn't believe the times that we'll ask for it and the it providers like no you don't need that <laughs> but, you know you just i have it if you need it where are you going to be six years from now are you going to have what you know? let me see what you got you know yeah. i need it for my records but if I, you you I, like a, if I show you what I if I show you what I got, it's going to show you I'm not doing it. I know, right? I, you know, if I show you that, you'll know I'm not doing it. And <laughs> they'll send a, a printout of their ticketing system. I'm like, that's not helping me. It's yeah. not helping me. That shows me what you're doing. Uh, as far as a ticket goes, it doesn't show me statistics and charts or whatever. Hey, I have 132 devices that are accounted for in my inventory. Yes, it sees them. And wait a minute, I only have 100 antivirus licenses. Huh. I can do math. <laughs> What's going on? Or, you know, we're getting all these alerts. Is somebody doing anything about them or getting the same alert over and over and over and no one's doing anything about it? Has someone investigated that? Is it being documented? Are they checking on it regularly to make sure nothing's changed? These are things that you need. And it's one of the things that, you know, David can tell you that there are plenty of people who do not understand that need. And it's part of you understanding your need as well as them understanding it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So that, that's my big soapbox moment <laughs> for that. All right. So we talked a little bit about, you know, making sure that you know what to expect from the MSP or MSSP. So let's, let's dive down into, into what that looks like. Cause some people are like, well, I don't know what to expect from them. All right. So we're going to tell you <laughs> one is you should expect communication and lots of it. Because these people are providing your IT services and your security. They're basically on your team. So yeah. there should be communication there. There should be 
um, meetings happening, you should bring them into your meetings when you're doing planning things. You're like, hey, we're going to bring in this new piece of equipment or we're thinking about adding this new department or, I mean, there's a million different things. You should be bringing these people into these conversations to find out how that's going to affect them and how what they're doing is going to affect what you're trying to do. Oh, I know. When we used to run MSP and all of our clients, we did an annual technology plan. And they're mm-hmm. like, we'd say, you know, new client, well, we need to have that meeting now. We're, what's your plan? When do you want to do that meeting? And they're like, what co- What are you talking about? <laughs> mm-hmm. But it helped them. They budgeted for things and all of those. You should see somebody proactively helping you learn how to do these things if you're not already doing them or participating if you are. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of, uh, we haven't had this happen, but I've heard of other MSPs who say that clients come to them and have literally opened up a second location and they didn't even know that was going to happen until they got a call and it was like, can you come and set these new computers up that we ordered? <laughs> okay. And, and I'm like, wow, um, there is a big breakdown in communication there. So yes, you should be expecting communication uh, on both sides. All right. So the next thing you should expect, and this is a biggie, documentation. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, is that something that seems to be hard to get from some of these MSPs. <laughs> Technical people don't like to write anything down. They don't like to show you they did their work. You should just trust me. You know, it's in my head. I know I did it. <laughs> just eat your broccoli. That's all we want you to do. <laughs> so documentation. That means checklist and stuff like that documentation, not the other reports we talked about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if they're, if they're, Baffling you with BS? Question it. You know, if they're if they're dumping three hundred pages of documents and going, here you go. Yeah. Well, who's reviewing it? <laughs> yeah, because let me tell you something. If you try to do that with OCR, they're not going to be happy with you. Mm-mm. Nope. Eh-eh. All right. All right. So the other thing is technical reviews, and you just mentioned this, Donna. They should be meeting with you to have a technology review to go over what they're doing what the business looks like, some issues they're running into, problems they're seeing, whatever. They need to have a sit-down meeting with you, uh, or I guess a Zoom meeting now, (laughs) to go over these things. And it should be periodically. It it shouldn't be, you know, once every blue moon, you know, two years, three years. Somebody should be saying, you know what? Windows 7 is going to end of life, and you shouldn't have heard about that last year. You should have heard about it two years ago. Right. Yeah. So what what we do is we have technology reviews based on the size of the client and complexity of the client. So for some, we do it quarterly. We, some we do it semi-annually. Some we only do it annually. And usually what we do is for a new client, we'll, do, we'll actually do these monthly for the first six months. And, um, and so you want to get them used to having these meetings and, and what they're all about. And, and understanding what types of things that IT should be doing. So make sure you're having those technology reviews. Uh, also, periodic assessments. So we talked about how IT likes to come in and they do an assessment before they give you a proposal, but oftentimes that's the last assessment they ever do for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so you know there should be some type of assessments that's happening at some point periodically and, uh, and continually. So it's kind of like the technology reviews. Maybe it's an annual assessment they should be doing for you again or something, but they there should be assessments happening beyond just the assessment to get you in the door and get and get you started. Action plans and roadmaps. So that kind of goes back to what I was saying with, you know, are they following some type of uh, compliance framework? Well, same thing with this. Do they have an action plan or roadmap that they're following to get you from where you are to where you want to be? Or is it just, well, I think this might be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so, so look for that. And then lastly, you should expect them to be able to identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. <laughs> Sound familiar, Donna? Yeah. Ipder. <laughs> so those are the components of the cybersecurity framework. So they should be able to identify threats and uh, they should be able to protect you from those threats. They should be able to detect security incidents, respond to those things, and then recover you from those things should they happen. So now you know why, why you're paying so much for IT support. (laughs) 
Yeah, it will make more sense if you truly understand what you need them to do and that they can do it. Yeah. So in so addition, yay, David. Yeah. So in addition to providing IT support and security, if I'm also doing tons of communications, tons of documentation, technical reviews, periodic assessments, creating action plans and roadmaps, and I'm identifying, protecting, detecting, responding, and recovering, and I have all that stuff covered, whether you ever put a ticket in or not, all those things are <laughs> happening. Yeah. If you're not calling them, that's happening. And that's why you're not calling them. Right. There is still a ton of work that should be happening regardless of, of whether you put in a ticket that you can't print. <laughs> All right. That's it. Anything else? No. I think I, uh, you did good, David. So Thank you. Now you know how to evaluate your MSP. It's easy peasy. <laughs> easy peasy. <laughs> uh, all right. So is that it? Nothing else? It is. You did good. All right. We're done. All right. So that is our show for today, folks. Remember to follow us and share us out on your favorite social media site. Rate us on our podcasting app. Help us spread the word and uh, give your MSP a hard time. They deserve it. (laughs) (laughs) Remember for Donna and myself that HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims, the show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.